So today on Sunny Talk Spurs, I am joined by an Arsenal fan in the shape of Harry Simi. Obviously, North London derby this weekend, nervous times for both clubs. Obviously, Harry is from Chronicle of Aguna. So after you've watched this, go over there, check it out. It's a very good platform indeed. How are you doing though today, Harry, ahead of this one? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, mate. Um, I'm focused at the time of recording on the Champions League, <laughs> oh, um, yeah. but I, I can't help um, but think ahead to the North London derby coming up at the weekend as well. It's, it's kind of taken the shine off the Champions League return for Arsenal a little bit because you want Arsenal to go out there tonight and give it everything. But at mm. the same time, you're like, but we can't afford for him, him or him to pick up any knocks <laughs> or injuries. So, yeah, um, it's, it's an interesting feeling. That's the thing. You obviously got the Martinelli news. We obviously don't know what's going to happen as the week goes on. But, you know, already with us not playing European football, we've got a bit of a more relaxed fixtures schedule. But again, you know, first time back in the Champions League in six years for Arsenal. It's a, it's a heavy period when you're at the top, isn't it? I, you know, assume from your point of view. It's like we've sort of swapped sides over the last couple of years. We were in the Champions League. Now you're in the Champions League. We probably won't be in the Champions League ever again at the same time now, will we? Yeah, it's going to be tough, isn't it? Although there is going to be that fifth spot, we think, as well uh, from from next season, which could be inter- or maybe even from this season at the end of it, uh, which is going to be interesting. So, um, yeah, let's um, let's see how it goes. But yeah, the, the fixture schedule is big and it's heavy and it's a problem at times. But equally, at the same time, I look at it and I think these are the games that you want to play in and, and you want to be in these types of competitions. So you've got to take the rough with the smooth. 100%. Now, my first question is obviously about the fixtures we've seen so far. I just want to get your point of view of what have you made of Arsenal's start to the season? Obviously, new signings in the likes of Declan Rice and Kai Havertz. And also, what have you made from looking at Tottenham? Have you been sort of impressed with how we've started under Ange Postacoglu? So, firstly, on Arsenal, uh, yeah, a few signings came in. The one that people seem to not overlook, but not really mention is Jury and Timber. And I thought that was a great bit of business from Arsenal, but unfortunately he's picked up that injury mm. and he's probably going to miss the majority of this season, which was a big blow. But in terms of like how Declan Rice has come in, I think he's fit in like a, like, you know, like he's been there for years. Um, he's been amazing. And with every game that goes by, you feel like he's getting more accustomed to what it is that Mikel Arteta is asking him to do because his role at Arsenal is a different role to that that he played at West Ham. The the priorities are different. The things that you're being asked to do on the ball are different. Um, he's being asked to take a bit more responsibility in terms of progressing the ball forward and all the rest of it, um, which is something that, you know, he's going to have to adapt to. I think he's doing fine. Um, Arsenal's start to the season in terms of performances hasn't been great. Um, and I'm comparing it to last season's start where Arsenal came out of the blocks with five wins out of five, um, were really impressive and convincing in all of those games. They haven't always been convincing at the start of this season, but they've got the results. With the exception of dropping a couple of points against Fulham in what was a really, really frustrating afternoon at Emirates Stadium, it's gone pretty well. You still feel with the Gunners that there's a couple more gears to go up into, and maybe that will be better in the long run in that, you know, maybe we burnt out too early last season, maybe we peaked too early. You know, Pep Guardiola talks about that a lot, doesn't he? About sort of managing his side to the point where they peak at the right times so maybe there's an element of that to it um or maybe they just haven't performed as as well as they can but there's nothing to worry about at Arsenal I don't think there's anything to be concerned about I think we're pretty much at where we thought we'd be at and obviously the big question going into the campaign was how would we cope with Premier League football Champions League football and now an expectation to compete in the domestic cups as well you know Arteta was always able to not hide behind but put forward the point that the squad wasn't deep enough and that would excuse him I think from needing to go very far in other competitions and you know at that point it was tunnel vision we need to get back in the Champions League that's changed now so the dynamic's going to be interesting and and how we cope is going to be uh, really really interesting to see from Tottenham uh, from looking at Spurs looking at a few miles down the road I've been impressed with Andrew Postacoglu I really really have I think he's a he's a great guy I think he's a great coach um being of being of greek origin i've got a bit of a soft spot well i had a bit of a soft spot for him until he took the spurs job um and now i've, I've just got a sort of you know um i just got a stomach it that you know he, he seems like a good coach and a good guy and he's he's, he's managing tottenham Hotspur. but what he's done for you guys and you know you all know way more than me but it just feels like he's brought the enjoyment back and the fun back and i felt 
that when Unai Emery was in charge of Arsenal, for example, that we lost that as well. We lost that enjoyment. We lost that connection with our team. And and I started to feel at times apathetic towards Arsenal. And I'd never felt that at any point before in my life. And that's a really horrible place to be as a fan. You'd almost rather be angry than apathetic. And and I think that that's where Spurs fans from from people I speak to and, and work with were at prior to Postacoglu coming in. But the interest is back again. Some exciting players are coming through the door. What I will say is, I don't think you've played too many difficult fixtures yet. Uh, Manchester United, for me, you know, in in historical terms, is a difficult fixture. But you look at the state of them at the moment, I think actually... <laughs> very true, you know, very true. I, I expect you to win. So mm. I think that that shouldn't take away from Ange Postacoglu and, and the feel-good factor that he's brought. But I'm... Um, I'm not going to say I'm massively scared of Tottenham at this moment in time, not in an arrogant way, but I'm more curious about how they're going to continue to develop, how they deal with the first setback, all the rest of it. Because I think, you know, the new manager bounce thing is a thing. And the way you can tell if something's really going to work is how they come through the first couple of difficult periods. And Spurs will have those at some point in the season. But again, not to take away from the job he's done. I think he's great. The football they're playing is great. And, um, I'm more nervous about them coming to Emirates Stadium this season than I have been for the last two or three, which says something. I think I have to agree with you with both points there. Like Tottenham, you know, I, I think, you know, we've started well, it's all looking good and we've got a bit of a vibe back. But the thing is, it is that, you know, we haven't really had a major test. And maybe our major test was Manchester United in that first half where they did carve us open a few times, but we were quite lucky. But when we faced the quality of you, then Liverpool in the following week, I think that is where we're going to see what this Tottenham side are really made of and probably lower our expectations. I think a few fans are aiming for the, the stars already, but we should really take it patiently. We should learn from, which is, I, I seem to be drawing com more comparisons with Arsenal about this, you know, trust the process and, you know, Arteta was given time and look at it now. It's the perfect thing that could have happened. I think the same has got to happen for Postacoglu. He's got to be given time. He's got to be given money. You know, it's, it's, it is going to be a couple of years. And he said that himself in the TalkSport interview he did. And what you were saying about Arsenal, I think, spot on. I think you've looked a bit different this season. I think there's, you know, you're, you're playing a bit differently in the sense of, you've, you know, you've embedded Declan Rice in and a few other players, Kai Havertz. But people said that about City last year. Oh, they're not looking amazing. But they were yeah. getting results and it was still ticking along. Like last night, they were saying it about it in the Champions League. So... At the end of the day, that is the stereotypical sign of champions, isn't it? Like, if you're getting results and still undefeated at this stage in the season, it's still quite good. But you obviously mentioned Ange Postacoglu there has come in and brought attacking football back to Tottenham. Do you feel like now, when it comes to managers, I'm thinking of the likes of, you know, Ange and Arteta, they're all cut from a similar mould of this, like, attacking football. And also, they've got a bit of relation to Pep, haven't they, you know... And just said how much he's respected Pep Guardiola when he was in Japan, and same with obviously Arteta. Literally learned second hand from him. Do you think most of these managers are now pretty much uh, cut from the same cloth? Would you say? Yeah, they've got similar values and principles. I think is is the way I'd put it. They've got similar beliefs in in how the game should be played. Um, you know, it's. I can remember a time where we used to look across the Premier League and you could find loads of the old school, the Sam Allardyces, the Steve Bruce's, the David Moyes, those type of managers. And, and they've been phased out because it's not an attractive way of playing the game. And ultimately, clubs don't want to go down that route if they can avoid it. Now, some clubs have had to turn back the clock and go back to those types of managers when they're in dangerous areas. A, a good example of that would be Crystal Palace, who were like, we need to move away from Roy Hodgson and you know, sort of what he rep represents, bringing Patrick Vieira, it doesn't really work. So what do you do? You go back to Roy Hodgson because you know you're going to get a base level of, uh, of you know, um, of performance, which is going to be enough to keep you in the league, which is what it's about for a lot of clubs. I think I think Arteta is quite similar to, to Pep Guardiola and, and that would be the case because he learned from him and he worked with him. But there are also a lot of differences. And I think that people often rush to call Mikel Arteta Pep 2.0 when actually there's a lot of things that he does differently and also on top of that there's a lot of things that Pep Guardiola has admitted publicly that he learned from Mikel Arteta I'm not saying that you need to credit Arteta with any of Pep's success but just that you know people learn off each other don't they and you're going to take on what you get from your surroundings the thing I like about Ange is 
because he's been to other countries and he's managed in different leagues, he's got an experience and an idea of world football, which I think helps you adapt when you move to different places. Um, I think it's something that British coaches don't do enough, go manage in other places. Um, and instead they drop down the leagues and then sometimes it's difficult to, to build up in terms of getting their career in the Premier League going. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of similarities in that they all want to play the game the right way. I think Andrew's football is different to, to Arteta's from what I've seen. I feel like it's a bit more direct. It's a bit more um, faster paced. With Arteta's football, where I compare it to Pep's is that it's a bit it's a bit slower at times and you, you sort of play in bursts. But the overall idea is, can we dominate the ball? And if we dominate the ball and we dominate territory, then we are in a position from which we should be winning football matches. Um, and that's kind of the overarching sort of um, principle. But I think Angie's football is a little bit more front foot, a little bit quicker. Um, and that's only based on the maybe three, four games I've seen of Spurs so far this season. And obviously moving on now, I've spoken about how we've sort of both flip-flopped. Obviously you went through your, maybe a banter era, you know, the struggles and you've definitely come back from that now, you know, finishing eighth consecutively, fifth and then second. And then Tottenham sort of did the opposite. We've fallen like a lead balloon. But obviously we've mentioned how we're trying to obviously get back to where we think we should be, whatever that is. I'm really not sure what that is anymore, but... Are you at all worried about the direction Spurs could head in? Obviously, I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight. I'm not saying it could happen at all. But do you reckon if you know we continue with Ange at the helm and maybe you know more positive signings like James Madison, can Tottenham be a threat to Arsenal? If not, you know, really disturb the top four again like they did a few years ago. It can. I tell you where I where I think that Spurs fall short a little bit, and this is not mm. me being a salty <laughs> Arsenal fan, which is I'm sure what will be said in the comments. Yes. But I like, I remember three, four years ago saying the same thing about Arsenal, which was we have got an ownership that do not care about winning things. All they care about is getting in the Champions League, collecting that revenue, and that is it. That's what they're interested in. And it felt like for a long time, Arsenal Football Club would only invest what was required in their eyes to get into the Champions League. No more, not a penny more. I worry for Spurs that you can have a great coach, which I think you do now. You can have good players, which I think you do now. But in order to get to that level where they're competing right at the top of the table, i.e. for the Premier League title and going far in the Champions League and all that, they're going to need to invest a lot more than they currently do. Mm. And just based on evidence in recent years, I don't think that's going to happen. I always feel like with Levy and co, they come in and or they bring someone in, they back them a little bit, but it's always half assed It's always, mm. you know, we'll back you to a point, but not beyond that point. Whereas at Arsenal, th to get to this point where Arsenal are now seen as one of the best teams in the country again, it's required the club to make some really big moves, like 100 million pound on Declan Rice, you know, 65 million on Kai Havertz, it's 50 million on Ben White. When people were saying, what the hell is that about at the time? Aaron Ramsdale cost a big amount of money. They've gone and brought a second top goalkeeper in to fight with, like, they're really going at it. And along the way, they've also terminated contracts of Aubameyang, Ozil. Like, these are big decisions that the club has made to accelerate Arsenal's progress. Um, and, look, they should do that because they're the owners of the club and it's their football club. It's in their best interest for Arsenal to be at the highest level possible. But I don't know yet, based on previous evidence, that Spurs would do that, would go that far. And that would be my concern about this discussion of how far can Spurs go? Can they really get to the pinnacle? It, it, it depends on that for me. I think you're spot on because, you know, you're saying, as soon as you said it, you're buying a player for 100 million. We're selling Harry Kane. You've got rid of the likes of Mustafi, uh, Socrates, you know, all that Deadwood. We just got rid of Harry Winks. And I mean, we got rid of Davison Sanchez in the end, but we've still got Eric Dyer lingering, Hugo Lloris. You know, we're still a long way off you know, you're probably probably about four or five years ahead of us now, where at a stage, we were a little bit ahead of you, and we could have gone that extra distance, say under Pochettino, when we didn't spend in a calendar year, uh, and, you know, Levy was 
I'm willing to back managers. And even, I don't know if you've seen this Tottenham fans forum that happened this week, but he even admitted that, yes, I did appoint the likes of Conte and Mourinho, these win-now managers, and I own up to that mistake. But what that probably has done is that has set back us God knows how many years. And I look I look now at that that year we beat you to top four, um, thanks to, you know, that good derby win at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. I, I dread to actually think what would have happened if we hadn't have got top four that year. Like I feel like we needed that to just sort of run the finances and actually push us on a little bit. But yeah. it's obviously it's all with buts and maybes, but it just saddens me. The more I actually delve back into Tottenham's last couple of years, it just is absolutely Harrowing, but now again to probably praise Arsenal a bit more, which I sound like I'm I don't know what's going on here. But obviously, you're more definitely involved in the title race than we will be this season. And you know, I, I, from listening to you on Talk Sport and stuff like that, you are a very positive Arsenal fan, I would say. You know, you back yourself um, and the team. Do you reckon you can really give City a proper fight again this season? and take them all the way and if not go that one step further and lift the titles as as much painful as that would be to me it's it's really hard um i have to say and you know when i was sort of as you mentioned on talk sport a lot last season i was always one of the people that was reluctant to say that arsenal were going to go on and win the league and i remember sort of whoever i was on with would try and like prize it out of me They'd be like, oh, come on, you've just beaten this club or you're six points clear or whatever. Surely you're going to do it. And I'd always say no, because I knew that we were one or two injuries away from having a real problem in certain areas. In the end, we lost William Saliba and Tommy Asu at the same time, which killed us defensively. Mm. We lost Partey at points towards the end of the season. And when he came back, he didn't look 100 percent and his form was off and you know, that was a big problem for us. Whereas now you've got Declan Rice that can come in. You would have had Jury and Timber that could come in. You know, you feel like there's more options now. So in that sense, yes, I feel like Arsenal can at least replicate what they did last season. But at the same time, this Manchester City side is so incredible that I, I can't say it's black and white and go, if Arsenal don't win the league this year, it's failure. Like, I, I think that's too simplistic a view to have. Mm. For me, it's about finishing within reaching distance of Manchester City and giving the Champions League a good go. That's what I want to see from Arsenal this season. Um, can we do it? Yeah, we're good enough. But are we going to be able to to hit the levels that they hit over such a long period of time? Because their consistency is unreal. You know that if they need to, they can put a 10-15 game winning streak together. And I don't think there's been any other club in the history of the Premier League I've been more confident that can do that than them. So we can do it. It's possible, but... Like I'm not going to sit here and bet on it at this moment in time because of the opposition, not because I don't believe in what we've got, more so because of how good they are. And that's the thing. I mean, that's what I'm worried about this season when it comes to Man City. We have got quite a good record against them. And I feel like <laughs> playing this way of attacking football, we're probably going to now get carved open from them. But uh, it is what it is. Now, before I get your predictions for the game, I've got one little last fun question I want to ask you. Because I know... You're, I'd say, a Kai Havertz defender. Uh, <laughs> you know, I've heard you many times on the social and talk sort of say about him. But if I was to offer you right now a swap deal, Kai Havertz for James Madison, are you taking it? Um, Probably, yeah. Oh. Probably, yeah. Probably, and, uh, yeah. Look, I, I, I tell you, the, the reason I say probably and not just yet is because, listen, James Madison's hit the ground running. He's been great for Spurs and, mm. you know, it's a fantastic signing. But I, I just, this thing with Kai Havertz, it drives me mad that everybody's willing to write him off after four games. Like, not only has he changed clubs and he's playing in a totally different system, but he's also gone from playing at centre forward for the last couple of years to playing on the left side of central midfield. And he's going to need some time to adapt to that. Um, you know, I, I think Mikel Arteta's talent ID and recruitment over the last three years has earned him the right to not have the, his decisions questioned four weeks in. So I, I'm going to give it a bit more time. But I understand why people say it. Madison's impacting games. You know, he's scoring goals. He's providing assists. He's been he's been brilliant and a brilliant signing for Spurs. But when you look at what we have already. I, I, like, I don't think there's space for Madison and Odegaard, for example. Yeah, I agree. And and for me, Odegaard is on his way to becoming one of the best attacking midfielders in world football, if he's not there already. So 
Um, yeah, and and also Madison chose your lot, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go rush into having. <laughs> that is true. I've de- I've definitely jinxed this now because I heard a thing that technically you know all this 007 Havertz can become that on Sunday, and I just know from mentioning his name in this video he's going to score or assist now, and um, <laughs> it's going to come back to bite me because that's literally the way it all works. But now to round it all off, predictions uh, ahead of the game. How do you see it going, and what would be your scoreline? It should be, in theory, a really, really interesting game. Um, I'm interested to see how Spurs are going to approach it. I'm interested to see if Ange Postacoglu is going to say, go out there and play our normal game, or if he's going to adapt Spurs' game, make them a little bit more cautious because they're away from home. Over the years, this has been generally a fixture that goes with the home side, um, with the exception of, of obviously last season where Arsenal won both. But... Mm. Generally, I think, you know, home advantage is a big deal in this derby. So I'm going to go for an Arsenal win, but a narrow win. I'm going to say 2-1. Um, you know, I, I'm just, I'm really, because I think if Spurs come out and play Arsenal the way that they've been playing everybody else, they have the weaponry to hurt Arsenal, but they also leave themselves exposed. And it becomes a bit of a basketball match then. And anything can happen because both sides have quality in the final third. Um if if Spurs sit back and try and soak up pressure and, and try and hit on the counter-attack, that could be effective as well. I, I, it's, it's such a fascinating battle. I can tell you how Arsenal are going to play because they play the same every week. Mm. And, you know, they're going to want to play with a high line. They're going to want to dominate the ball. They're going to want to push the left back into midfield. They're going to want to push the left-sided midfielder mm. into the forward line, whether that be Havertz or Vieira or, or even Leandro Trossard. You know, it could be either of those three. I think that's what you're going to get from Arsenal. For Spurs, though, where Ange Postacoglu, I'm not going to say he's an unknown quantity, but he's still quite new. We haven't seen him go away from home in one of these big games yet. So mm. we don't really know what his view is and uh, and how he'll set up for something like that. That's the thing. I agree. I'm going to go for a tool draw because I think it's that midfield battle where I see it being won. We've got all our inverted wing backs and stuff like that. It's going to be congested in there with Pedro Poro and Udogi. It's going to be a real test for these players like Basuma and Romero. Like, can Romero, who's looked like he's turned a corner, can he keep his head and hopefully not get sent off? Can Basuma dictate in a game like this where he's going to come up against really class midfield options? And can our forwards actually keep scoring goals? You know, we're used to Harry Kane getting his trademark penalty in these games, but this... You know, we haven't obviously got him anymore. And, you know, the likes of Sun, Kulisevsky are going to have to step up. So I'm going to say two all because I think it's... I can I can envision us being carved open, but I feel like we're going to get chances as well. It's just... It is just going to be exciting and attacking. This basketball game is probably the perfect way to sum it up. But thank you very much, obviously, Harry, for joining me on this. Uh, obviously, it didn't get as heated as it could have got because we've got a lot of respect heading into this one and I can't sit here and not you know, not admire Arsenal, but, you know, I've got to pat them on the back in a, to an extent and be <laughs> like, you're doing something that we are now literally trying to replicate. But obviously, Harry is from the Chronicles of Aguna, a podcast. And if you want to check that out, that will be in the description down below. But I'll be honest, I'm not sure how many Tottenham fans might go and check that out, but some Arsenal fans might. So we'll see. But is there anything else you want to plug, uh, Harry? Uh, no, that's it. Check it out. Chronicles of Aguna podcast. Not that Spurs fans will, will enjoy it, but it is there if, if you are interested. Maybe you want to hear me moaning if we get beat at the weekend. Um, but yeah, no, that's no, it. Sure. Um, thanks for having me on, mate. Really appreciate it. Keep up the great work. Cheers. Um, and uh, yeah, all the best. Cheers. After Sunday. Yes, after Sunday. <laughs>